good afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture in the series on sociology of religion in today's lecture we are going to understand the secularization theories in sociology so we were going to focus mainly a number of ways in which secularization has been understood in social sciences though we we kind of un- avoiding any kind of uh, examples from the contemporary context because it will be taken up in a separate lecture so to begin with what is secularization it refers to the shift of a society that has a close concomitance with religious values and institution towards a one when non religious values and secular institutions prevail so basically if we were to provide a common sensical understanding of secularization we can understand a shift of a society from two extreme one is a religious society where the dominance is on beliefs in deities supernatural practices to a movement to a society where the emphasis is more on scientific knowledge on rationality which can be labeled as a secular society so a number of sociologists right from the inception of the discipline of sociology as a science of society effort has been made to describe and explain the religious change in modern period to keep in mind sociology as a discipline a kind of emerged specifically at a time when lot of large scale transformation was taking place and much of the documentation or theories were providing a evolutionary theory where the shift was seen from a simple society to a complex society from a religious based society to a industrial scientific society and it is here where we could locate the emergence of the process of secularization so to begin with we see a number of classical sociologists especially kind of beginning with the work of august comte to talcott parson simmel tonies to name a few they were all trying to focus on understanding the nature of social change and how this social change was affecting the different dimensions of society and basically in terms of understanding the way in which economy polity religion was kind of affected so the assumption of secularization theory was a major concern in classical approach of sociology work from the classic figures of sociology comes through durkheim tonies weber parson talcott parson peter berger luhmann and lot davis grace davy so we'll be looking into some of them in order to understand the concept of secularization most of the classical sociologists they saw the marginalization of religion as a central feature of this process that is you, when they were applying the evolutionary approach or transformation they were looking into how religion was getting marginalized or religion was becoming less significant compared to science technology and rationality now these theories because sociology was emerging in the western context the influence of enlightenment and the philosophical changes connected with reformation the separation of the church and the state was a dominant influence in kind of conceptualizing the process of secularization so if we were looking into the work of this classical sociologist let's begin with august comte august comte he developed the law of three stages again applying an evolutionary approach he was of opinion that society evolved through three different stage the first was the theological state theology means we keeping religion as important or significant it has been def- defined by comte as a fictitious 
uh, state because the reality is not as it appears. It is all kind of assumed to be the result of some supernatural power, some uh, unseen forces and therefore how we act or what we do are all kind of described with reference to the unknown unseen forces. The second stage is the metaphysical stage. As society progress, as we move ahead, we move from a theological stage to a metaphysical state. So, things are becoming a little concrete, but yet all things cannot be explained. There are certain realities which are existing at a metaphysical level. And further, with growth of industry, with growth of scientific temper, education, the, we move from metaphysical stage to a scientific stage. And here the human mind is kind of not working or not dependent on fantasies. They are not kind of only working according to the unseen, but every reality has a rational explanation. Whatever is happening is can be explained through a logical scientific explanation. The next sociologist was Max Weber. Max Weber, Karl Marx, Durkheim, all of them in their work in are uh, making reference to the shift of the society towards a complex secular society. Marx looked down upon religion and he considered it as malfunctioning and he was kind of saying that it only favored of a society which is devoid of religion. Weber on the other hand was more concerned about the disenchantment and dehumanizing effect of rapidly growing rationality and bureaucracy. So much of rationality that every action has to be explained with a scientific explanation, human minds gets disenchanted. It can then have no space for something which is as social, emotional or abstract. Everything has to be uh, put down in terms of a, a scientific explanation. Further, bureaucracy with rules, hierarchy, a closed kind of a, a formal structure further leads to dehumanized people. Weber argued that with advent of industrialization, people would start to look forward towards science and rationality and religion and supernatural would remain in the backside. Durkheim giving a functional explanation of religion in terms of increasing the collective consciousness of the society, he was placing the industrial society as kind of moving towards a disordered society. And it is here where he sees the role of religion and kind of advocates that the religion can help in creating a collective consciousness. Another sociologist of importance is Talcott Parson. Talcott Parson, the disengagement of the church from social life does not mean that the church is less important. He is giving us the theory of social differentiation that because of growth of science, industries, the growth of a complex society, differentiation has increased in society. Societies have become more complex. There are multiple of tasks that has to be done. But that does not mean that religion has become less significant. It is kind of only giving us that differentiation does not imply that the religion as an institution has collapsed. Traditional institutions such as church evolved to limit themselves to perform a smaller functions than they were doing earlier because earlier it was the only institution. Now there are multiple other education which has taken the work that it was doing. Yet does not mean that the function is not vital. It still plays a vital role in maintaining the system and the social order. If when we look move further in terms of sociological theories of socialization, 
we see a number of thinkers have explained not only the decline of religion or differentiation, but they have been, been different perspective in terms of deprivatization, differentiation of social system, Peter Berger, desecularization, Ulrich Beck, the re-enchantment of the world, Bill Wilson, social and cultural diversity, Steve Bruce, cultural defense or transition, and Grace Davy, a privatization of religion. All these phrases used by these thinkers are giving us an alternate explanation of the process of secularization. There was a lot of disagreement with each other. But what is uh, important to remember as a sociology student is to understand that the relation between religion and society was undergoing change. Now, it, some have kind of focused more in terms of the significance of science and therefore religion kind of relegated to the backside. Others have kind of said that it still continues to be important. Let us look into these work to understand how socialization, uh, secularization has been conceptualized. So, we begin with double three level of secularization. The first is societal secularization, which is typical consequence of the process of modernity and the program promoted by political party. So, modernity was also kind of considered to be more secular, more uh, you know. So, many a time a kind of uh, dichotomous mapping was done. In the uh, agrarian society was simple society, they were traditional society, uh, industrial society, complex society, modern, secular. But many a time this mapping uh, uh, is uh, often problematic. The next thinker, uh, think the second level of secularization is individual secularization that manifested in the decline of church commitment occurring as individual recompose their personal beliefs and practices. And at the third level is organizational secularization covers the incidence of adaptation of religious bodies to secularize society. The second uh, thinker is Jos Casanova and he kind of differentiates between three forms of secularization. One is differentiation. This happens when non-religious activity in the society becomes distinct from religion. So, there is a kind of tendency to differentiate activity. One which would be religious, the other which would be non-religious. So, earlier you know it could be that the place of worship was also a shelter home, it was also providing meal to people. Now, if this shelter home is taken by another institution and meal is taken by the third institution, there is a differentiation in the role. But that does not mean the earlier institution which was doing all the three becomes less significant. The second form is decline of religious beliefs and practices. So, now because we have many other work to do, the task of kind of doing all the religious beliefs and practices is kind of reduced, but it does not imply that one is non-religious. The third is privatization and this is more kind of helping us to understand the process of secularization with relation to the state and church. Since the state and the church has been separated and the state becomes the regulator of public space, what has to be done, how you practice your religion, how you ensure freedom of religion kind of becomes restricted to the public, uh, to the domestic life. That is, you enjoy your freedom of religion at the private level and it does not interfere with the public space. The next uh, thinker is Nicholas Luhmann. Luhmann argued that the increasingly difference between the primary subsystem of modern society 
had forced religion to adapt at three level. Now, Luhmann is kind of uh, forwarding the theory of Talcott Parsons uh, social differentiation and adaptation of social system. Now, this adaptation of religion takes place at three level. The first is personal level. What someone believes becomes a matter of personal choice. So, I as an individual have the freedom to develop my own belief system and it need not be dictated or enforced by the public. The second level is social level. Now, I as an individual have my own belief practice, but that brief practice has to be within the norms of the community to which I belong. So, it is has to be a norm binding uh, perspective of the society which ensures that the society is integrated. Because of the belief of individual, the society cannot be in conflict. And the third level is world pictorial cognitive level. Now, secularization is more at the third which is the cognitive level because we have kind of widened the horizon of socially ascertainable. Religious forms of meaning increasingly lose their uh, plausibility. Another sociologist to give us the concept of secularization and his work the sacred canopy is very important. Peter Berger kind of looks into religious diversity that sets the trend towards secularization. So, earlier if we people were all follower of one particular religion that the code of conduct or the way in that religion practiced was kind of accepted by all. Now, because there are number of religion, each one of them are going to abide with the practice of their own. So, in the middle age, the Catholic church had the monopoly of religion and it was kind of considered as a universal religion. As a result, everybody lived under the same sacred canopy. A uh, sacred canopy is a sad belief. Everybody had a sad common belief. Since reformation took place and the emergence of the protestant uh, movement, the number and variety of religious organization increased. This diversity creates a plurality of life world. This means that plausibility of each religious view is undermined. So, because of the diversity, secularization as a process was uh, taken place. The another uh, sociologist is Ulrich Beck and his work the risk society is significant in understanding the changes that has taken place in society because of modernity. We have become uh, kind of so complex, we have transformed our society towards technology, towards rational thinking, formal relation that it is a kind of always on a risk. So, he has also written a God's own, one's own and here he kind of argues the decline of religion. In his theory of reflexive modernity, Ulrich Beck points out the central social role of religion even in Europe has kind of declined. He highlighted religion's potential to produce ethical reflexive individual who could contribute to a peaceful cosmopolitan world. Reflexive religious individualization is characterized by a turn to choose an experience alongside a cosmopolitanization of belief which equips religion for an age of pluralism and global risk. The next thinker is Steve Bruce. He kind of argues that religion is used either for cultural defense or cultural transition. Cultural defense is when religion is used to defend an identity that is under threat. So, you will need to kind of argue that one particular religion is more truthful than the other. And transition is where religious provides a sense of community for ethnic group as they adapt to new society or culture. Although these trend that is cultural defense and transition seems to disapprove secularization, Bruce asserts that religion only thrives 
when it provides an external function to the individual. The next is Wilson. Brian Wilson viewed secularization as a fundamental social process taking place in the organization, in the society, in the culture and in the collective mentality and hence it is an essential aspect of modernization. Secularization does not necessarily mean that the importance of religions is uh, declining but explains a situation in which religious thinking, practice and institution cease to be important force in the society. There are three distinctive level of analysis that is important to understand when we try to uh, look into the relation between religion and secularization. What are these three level of analysis? Number one, religious practice. The extent to which people involve themselves in church membership, attendance and so forth. So in say in the medieval period before reformation, individuals were kind of more into getting membership, uh, going every day for the mass, for the prayers and therefore the uh, understanding of whether religion was significant or not was through the quantitative understanding of number of membership, attendance and so forth. The second level of analysis is religious organization. The extent to which religious organization are able to exert influence and control over the running of the society in which they exist. So again going back to the pre-reformation period, the church as an organization was all powerful. It was able to control the way in which individual lived their life. Now third is religious thought. The extent to which people believe in concepts such as God, good, evil, sin or whatever. So again at a time when religion kind of was predominant. These concepts were there as part and parcel of everyday life. Religious activity was on increase and with industrialization, with modernity, these occurrence of these concept decline and the activities as well kind of becomes less significant in individual life. Grace Davy kind of gives us that religion People may be followers of a religion but may not engage in collective worship. Why? Because we are more occupied in our economic work, in our political work, that is we are more in non-religious work. Now the priority has been, been given to secular world over religious work. So if we are have to complete our secular world, we will not be participating in the collective worship. And therefore, the what is appears in the public domain is the decline of the religious activity. People do not have to be members or affiliate themselves with religious organization to be religious. Debbie refers to this as believing without belonging, namely continuing to believe in religious values but without outwardly belonging to a particular church or religious organization. Now these are some of the ways in which sociologists kind of conceptualize the process of secularization. Lot of change has taken place since the time in the 19th century till 21st century and we see a shift or transformation in the debates. 19th century uh, you know we brought about uh, understanding of modernization, secularization and they were kind of connected that once modernity comes in, rationality comes, scientific knowledge, secularization out to happen. But then we see in the 20th century number of uh, thinkers have gone back and says that such a mapping of modernity and secularization is not always true. So the problem arose when the United States came into the question since it became difficult to justify continuing religious belief in a country which was technologically very progressive. So it was given as a country uh, best example of secularization. So technology was, and industries had all progressed. So where 
there was the space for religion or how was it possible that people were religious. So, it could not kind of become the standard to understand the decline of religion with the coming of technology and therefore, there was a counter argument in terms of understanding that religion and technology are not averse to each other. And some thinkers who kind of explains this is David Martin. David Martin argues that religious and non-religious institutions have become increasingly differentiated over time. He ex explores different ways in which religious values, Christian values in particular, remain relevant and influential today despite the differentiation of society. A wide range of observations are presented on the multiple ways in which religion and modernities can go together. Religion is moving out of the traditional territory into the other value space. So, even if we are technologically very savvy, we can be very progressive, industrialized, rational, yet religion continues to be significant. And that is why Peter Berger kind of uh, revises his theory. He gives us a new theory and he kind of says that it could not only be associated with era of enlightenment as modernization did imply a decline of religion both in the societal as well as in the private sphere. Peter Berger's new theory allowed him to rethink, no longer assume the primary place in the study of sociology of religion and it was not specifically European origin. The task of sociologists was to therefore change from explaining the absence of religion instead of its presence in the modern world. So, sociologists need to understand how is religion present, where are they affecting every uh, individual's uh, relations in, with economy, with polity and therefore, this will bring about a paradigm shift in the study of religion. So, so we need to kind of look into that the religion and uh, polity are kind of two domains, but they yet they are related to each other. The relations has changed with change in other cause, but that is what has to be explored to understand secularization as a process. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.